Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rigging to the Con video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up over the past 24 or so hours. We're going to be starting things out with the RX 500X series. That's a bit of a mouthful of a name, isn't it? And going through exactly what these cards will be, as an OEM has decided to give us some insight into what AMD's strategy is for these particular uh, GPUs. And then we're going to move over to the Ryzen 5 2600, specifically final specifications and performance information for this CPU. That's right, a review has leaked early. Just so we're all on the same page, I'm recording this once again on my cell phone. I'm still in Seattle, but I've missed you guys, so I wanted to put something out. Um, so here we are. I'm doing this without notes. Normally I do have notes, so it's going to be a little more challenging because I'm going to have to remember things off my memory rather than actually having notes so but i'm sure we're going to get through this it's it's going to be amazing all right so let's start things out once again with the 500x series so we actually first heard about these particular gpus a day or two ago when they were leaked from amd's own official web page that's right amd let the cat out the bag a little early and immediately we started speculation. What exactly will we be looking at here? Will it be a shrunk node? Will we be looking at, for example, the integration of GDDR5X? R5X was considerably more likely than R6. After all, it's A, cheaper, and B, and this is amazing clock speed increases for the Polaris series. It wouldn't really require that amount of memory bandwidth, but 5X would certainly be quite nice because we all know that Polaris is memory bandwidth constrained to a point, Will AMD have included some of the Vega feature set? What exactly would be the difference? Well, not bloody much is the answer. A power color representative couldn't reveal too much information, but did inform us that these cards are essentially an OEM branding. They are not completely different SKUs. Therefore, if once again you're expecting this particular series of cards to have an additional set of compute units or greatly improved memory bandwidth for any of that jazz, not going to happen. They are essentially an OEM rebrand. There are some rumors that some of the cards in the lineup will have higher clock speeds, 5 or 6%, but that's far from confirmed at this point. So if I were you, and judging from the 560X specifications which leaked from, thanks to uh, 3D Mark, it appears that it's essentially just a like-for-like -like branding, which, yes, is upsetting a lot of people, it's possible, however, that this doesn't necessarily impact AMD's long-term strategy for the GPUs. They may also just be waiting in the wings and seeing what NVIDIA do, and when NVIDIA finally release Turing or Volta or whatever the hell they're going to end up calling their next architecture. Unfortunately, and you know what I'm about to say, no one really knows for certain. There's a lot of speculation, especially on NVIDIA's part, when we're going to be seeing the new GPUs, and I think we can all agree that if AMD don't release something that is going to replace uh, the current generation of Polaris, especially for like the mid-range. So, you know, that would be tackling the equivalents of the 1170 or the 2070 or whatever it's going to be called, and even the 1160s, whatever it's going to be called. AMD are going to be really out of the race unless they can vastly bring down the prices of their GPUs. Next up, and that is the Ryzen 5 2600. Okay, so these leaks, or early reviews if you prefer, come to us from the website El Chupaz of Amatico, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly, and they do confirm the final clock speeds and specifications of the chip. I won't go through all of them, because suffice to say that the earlier rumours and leaks were pretty much accurate, they were at 3.9 GHz for the turbo frequencies, uh, 6 cores, 12 threads, and a partridge in a pear tree. But these parts are certainly going to be very compelling for the more budget-orientated gamer. So the cache layout remains exactly the same as the 1000 series, so 2 times 8 megabytes. DDR4 memory speeds is 2933. But what we are hearing, of course, is that these particular uh, Ryzen 2000 series processors can certainly support much higher clock speeds, although it may be unofficial but people are running way north of 3000 megahertz in some tests. And finally, TDP of 65 watts. So what type of performance are we going to be looking at here? Because that ultimately is probably going to be the, the, the deciding factor. Well, honestly, I'm fairly impressed with the performance of this. So let's start out with our friend and buddy, our bestest buddy in the whole world, Cinebench. So 
This one is Citibench 15 X64. Uh, this is using the 2933 MHz memory, so that's good. That means that they're obviously not holding back the CPU in terms of memory clock speeds. First things first, it is definitely slower than the 8700K. So if you thought that the 2600 is going to be able to somehow beat the 8700K, no. We were looking at a sheer clock speed advantage, of course, on Intel's part. I'm going to be very curious when we have a wider gamut of tests particularly when it comes to the overclocking side of things, but regardless, 1425 for the 8700K, whereas the 2600 scores a fairly respectable 20, sorry, 1277. Now compare that to the 1600, which is still running the same memory clock speed, and you're looking at about 140 points higher in terms of raw performance. So that's pretty good, and you can see that it stomps over the 6700Ks, uh, which, you know, are not even scoring 1000 points. Now compare this, however, to the 1700X, and obviously it doesn't hold a candle. Uh, the 1700X, 1550, and the 2700X uh, scores 1748. So you can see right there, there's a nice clear line through the sand. X26, another very popular type of uh, test that you're gonna be doing, or should I say task you're gonna be doing for a lot of users. These are obviously in frames per second. So the 2600, I'm obviously gonna, Assume that you all can see that the memory clock speeds and all that are the same as the previous test, 41.38, which is pretty impressive. It's a nice jump over from the basically 37 of the 1600 and definitely beats out the 8600K. And that to me is probably the story here, because if you were to look at the 8600K, it is noticeably slower in productivity tasks. And given the supposed leaked price points of these CPUs, for people who want to do, let's say, video editing or a little bit encoding or 3D work or whatever, and are operating more on a budget or perhaps doing some light gaming and other bits and bobs in the side, I can definitely understand uh, one of the reasons you would want to get these processors, especially if you don't have the budget to, let's say, go for the 8700K, 80, excuse me. I particularly once again, however, want to see what overclocking results are going to be on an average. But, you know, 35 frames per second versus 30, oh, sorry, 41.38 frames a second, there is certainly a nice improvement there. However, it doesn't still manage to capture the glory of the 1700X, which is essentially trading blows here with the 8700K. Okay, so what about other types of results? Well, latencies have also gone down quite substantially, and we can look at latency in NS here uh, once again. The 2600, uh, 2600 is a note showing a noticeable improvement over the previous generation. It's not quite Intel-like in its latencies, but it is definitely a substantial improvement. Finally, I'd like to bring your attention to 3D Mark Firestrike. Um, so the 2600 is bringing up the rear here. It's certainly way below the Intel results, but it is much closer than the um, previous generation managed with slower memory. But with faster memory, it's pretty much on par with the 1600. So in other words, if you have a 1600X with this particular test, if you are managing to get it to run at faster memory clock speeds, then you're not really going to see much of an improvement here. But some folks did notice that they had major memory incompatibility issues with the previous generation of Ryzen's, and supposedly that has been improved with the 2600. So perhaps that's something that you would want to take under consideration. Finally, let's discuss overclocking results. Now, obviously, this is not exactly a large sample size, so if you're worried about overclocking, I would suggest waiting a month or so after these processors launch to kind of get a better sample size, but for now, we have what we have. So the CPU clocks to 4.09 gigahertz, and that's with a voltage of 1.392, but it's imperative for us to understand that they are using an X370 motherboard. According to El Chapaz, they are telling us that they did have some stability issues with gaming. And um, so that's something to take into consideration. It's possible that this will be improved with a BIOS update. And also, we do know, of course, that the X470s and so on do have some tweaks which do improve voltage distribution and overall clock frequencies and stabilities and so on with the 2000 series. So... Once again, if you have a 300 series board, I would not necessarily say don't pre-order a 2000 series CPU, but because obviously different vendors are going to be 
slower or faster at releasing different BIOSes and there may be bugs and that type of thing. I'm not saying that you will be screwed on release, but I would just say, you know, have a little bit of caution, just maybe wait. And if your particular board doesn't get updated, it wouldn't be the end of the world to perhaps buy a 400 series uh, motherboard if that's something that you can budget. If not, then maybe wait for this generation to pass you by. But hey, that's just my opinion, right? Uh, normal stuff, like, share, and subscribe. Apo apologies once again for this video being a bit bitty, but I did want to discuss this, and as I said, to be honest, I've just kind of missed talking with you guys. Uh, I know vlogging's been a bit quiet recently, but I will be on that over the next couple of days, honestly. Um, <clears throat> it's been just nice to actually not be feeling sick and I only just got over my cold properly a couple of days ago and it was it was really vicious I felt extremely guilty because I actually gave it to a couple of my friends as well and one of them it's gone really on her chest it's not good I feel extremely bad about that so um, I'm glad that I didn't get it anywhere near that bad I think like the British germs are like probably more virile here or something I don't know Anyway, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. Normal stuff, like, share, subscribe. Uh, I have already arranged to meet up with a couple of viewers over the next couple of days. Um, so if you are interested in meeting with me, you can email, um, well, contact at redgamingtech.com if you so desire. Once again, just to remind you, I am in the Seattle area. I'm going to be here for another week or two. So you can feel free to reach out to me. And that's about it for this video. So hopefully... Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye for now.